Different traditions will look at the vibrational realities around us, the vibrations that affect human consciousness, that affect our thoughts, our feelings, as well as our energy system every moment of every day. In ancient Egypt, they understood that they were constantly interacting with conscious forces of nature and they termed these conscious forces of nature the netters. Netter is a foundation for our modern English term nature. And when you read these texts from the old Egyptian hieroglyphs translated into English, they will often use the term god or goddess when they are translating the term netter. This can lose something in the translation because again, the Egyptians understood they were interacting with conscious forces of nature and they understood how to have a communication code. And this is one of the secrets of the ancient Egyptian temple science, that some of the forms that we see from ancient Egypt, like the form of the Ankh, is not simply a metaphor, is not simply a symbol for life, but the form itself actually emits a carrier wave, emits a vibration that has an effect on living beings. Saint Luigi is a Catholic saint who is connected to the building of the cathedrals. And he's shown holding two forms. One is the cathedral, and the other is a staff of authority that has a very specific geometric form to it. The top of the staff has this type of spiral movement that works as a type of antenna to receive and send energy. By holding the staff at different points that are marked on it, you can use the staff as a vibratory device, and at one particular length of the staff, you can isolate a wavelength that is connected to determining a specific vibratory quality. Moving into modern times, the knowledge of how to actually test these specific vibrational qualities and to work with them is something that classically was always kept in closed circles, always part of closed initiation traditions but multiple spiritual traditions around the world knew about it and trained their own initiates in this type of science. Radiesthesia is the term used in Europe for sensitivity to or the ability to detect subtle radiations. And so the radiesthesia of the missionaries described the way that Jesuit priests were trained to be able to detect the vibrational qualities of the places that they were sent to. So just as we have today an electromagnetic spectrum that allows us to create electromagnetic technologies, so at that time, in 1933, they completed this understanding of the range of vibrational energies that are too subtle to be picked up by electromagnetic detection equipment. However, these subtle energies were known to the ancient spiritual traditions who practically applied these energies. And these particular energies do affect living beings, all biological life, in a profound manner. Although again, simple electromagnetic detection equipment will not detect their presence. They split the spectrum up into 12 different parts, and they completed the spectrum when they identified a penetrating carrier wave of energy that they referred to under the somewhat confusing name of negative green. They were able to isolate with the 12 bands of energy that they detected in the spectrum exactly what types of vibrations came from what types of forms and were also present in what types of illness and disease microorganisms. This also meant that they could isolate the specific type of subtle vibration that could neutralize the energy coming from these disease microorganisms. And this is very precise type of knowledge. They may refer to these things uh, in the different vibrational qualities under the names of colors, scales of quality, so the complete vibrational spectrum, creating all the possible effects on living beings, will appear in the scale of quality of color, but also in the scale of sound, also in the scale of motion, and angle, and shape, and proportion. They are all qualitative scales that create very specific energetic effects. So biogeometry is the science of energy balancing. We often refer to it as nature's own design language of shape, sound, color, motion, angle, proportion, all the way that nature creates vibrational and energetic effects are things that are studied and applied in biogeometry. It's also based on the principles of resonance, and resonance is when things of a similar vibrational quality can exchange energy and information, and the principle of harmonics, 
where this vibrational exchange takes place at all levels, at all planes of existence, all dimensions. Now, one of the remarkable things inside biogeometry is that it has practical methods for us to directly detect specific vibrational qualities, differentiate them one from another, and to apply them or transform them for practical purposes. One of the most fundamental parts of biogeometry is something called the physics of quality. Sometimes we take for granted that we live in an age of technological miracles. We just are so exposed to it every day, we don't think about it anymore. But the world has been completely transformed in the last 100 years through discoveries that have taken place over the last 150 years. Now, what I'm referring to here is that to have a science, you need to be able to differentiate any aspect of things into its component parts. You need to have a spectrum, what we would call spectrum analysis. So one of the first breakthroughs that we had was the identification of every type of matter that exists in the physical world. In the ancient world, you never had that. So we live in a material world, but we didn't know what all the different pieces of matter were until the latter part of the 1800s with the identification of the periodic table of elements. What is the, we call the periodic table of elements is really the identification of the complete spectrum of matter itself. Now we can be fully conscious of everything that makes up the physical world. That opened up everything in material science for all of our modern technology. But here's the problem that when we have the mastery of the electromagnetic spectrum and of the spectrum of matter, the periodic table, all of our technology today is based on how we stick this electromagnetic energy into specific pieces of physical matter, into silicon doped with germanium or whatever it might be, to hold a specific frequency. But what they ignore is what about the next level up? We should be aware that every major spiritual tradition on the planet, every traditional culture until about 300 years ago, all over the world, always focused their healing on the vital life force. That's true in every culture. It's only a very modern development to focus only on the physical body and claim there is no vital life force. So since we looked at only the subphysical and the physical for our modern technology, there was absolutely zero consideration given to the fact that these types of vibrations created by this technology are going to affect the vital life force level. So that vital life force level has got to come in to a new, more expanded scientific form of understanding. And again, we tend to try to understand it today through the number prism of the three gunas in Ayurveda, through the five elements of Chinese medicine, etc. But again, we can expand that into a spectrum that would include all of this phenomena together. One of the major researchers was a radio wave engineer named Louis Turin. And Louis Turin had studied French radiesthesia, the method of being able to pick up subtle vibrations through the use of particular types of pendulums or other tools. Now, the difficulty we have today is that their method has almost nothing to do with what you see today with the use of pendulums and mental dowsing. It's a completely different method. In this work, they don't ask any mental questions. They don't program the pendulum mentally ahead of time for movement. Rather, the pendulums have particular types of angles or shapes built into them that resonate with a particular vibrational force, or they can be tuned to a series of different vibrations. Then through the movement of the pendulum or other type of measurement tool, you'll then be able to perceive simply the presence or the absence of an invisible vibration that most people cannot perceive. Some people who are very sensitive energy healers or psychics may be able to perceive some of these energies. But what the tool allows you to do is then to pick up that vibratory force coming from any person, place, or thing. Now here's the thing. These 12 vibrations that make up the complete spectrum of subtle energy the exact same way that the electromagnetic spectrum shows the complete spectrum of electromagnetic energy, these energies were described for simplicity by the French in terms of colors. Because all of these subtle vibrations, they may be completely invisible, or that vibration can appear in any quality scale. What do I mean by a quality scale? A quality scale is shape, or sound, or movement, or angle, or color, or proportion. All of these are qualities. There are healers who use only light and color. There are healers who use only sound. There's healers that use only angles. There are healers that use only numbers. All of these are quality scales to express the complete spectrum 
of vibrational forces. In the French work, when you look at this particular spectrum, again, bear in mind that though it's expressed as color, color is only one way that invisible vibration can manifest. It could stay completely invisible to normal human senses, or it could manifest as a sound, as a shape, etc. That's why you see all of these medieval texts talking about correspondences. This sound equals this color, which equals this shape, which equals this string length, etc. In the French work, they talked about the way that the 12 vibrations will form around the boundary of objects. You can actually test them there directly. And then certain people, places, things, shapes, would manifest a very specific vibration. They called it the shape-caused wave. It's a vibratory wave that comes from a shape. One of the three energies is what he called the higher harmonic of gold. This is the exact same vibratory energy as what you see around the heads or the bodies of the saints in every tradition. It's not a metaphor. It's an actual vibrational force. There are ways this can be engineered and activated, and they use this all the time in the ancient world. So the French in their work in the 1930s identified the way that the 12 bands of vibration that they had detected, which are all of the polarized energies in the world, all the things that create one specific power,